This is a sauna. Goes up pretty easy, but it's not like your regular saunas. It is wood fired. I need no wiring. I need no plumber. I don't, I don't need a plumber for it. I bet you need no electrician. And it's wood fired. So the heat actually radiates in all directions from this thing. By the way, flame retardant materials on this tent. Two layers of 210D Oxford with insulation in between. These tents were designed actually for ice fishers originally. It's about 30 pounds in the carrying case. I used this thing all summer long in the mountain lakes of California. I was stunned by how well it works. And now there's an even better stove. It's working surprisingly well. It's humid because I'm boiling water on that pot. This whole thing is very doable to take down to a lake, a river, an ice hole. We've got some air vents which help circulate the air in here. Now, in my experience with this previously, you load up your wood, put in some paper, give it a light, do a quick 15 minute workout, and by the time you come back, this thing's ready to sweat in. And it's quite spacious too. You can stand in here with several guys. Big old YKK zippers on this thing. It is an insulated tent. This is some plastic here for a window. There are insulated panels you can Velcro onto this. I think if you're in a much colder situation, these would leak quite a lot of heat. Makes the lighting nice. I thought that there would be some plasticky smell inside. There wasn't. There never was. Probably had this thing up to 200, 220. Let's make sure these doors are open as much as as they can be. Now, let's talk about this stove. The Overland Superlight Sauna Stove, according to them, is the only one made in America right now, apparently, Oregon-based. Most wood fire sauna stoves come in at around like one to $3,000 and they're not travelable. This one you can travel with and it comes in at about 700 bucks. I like the face of it. Surprisingly large firebox. It's about 20 pounds lighter than any other option out there. Comes in about 29 pounds. So with a little carrying case, you can carry 29 pounds. I'm actually going to put these legs down so that you can see it better. 22 gauge cold rolled steel. American thunder. Now, it will show some rust if you get it exposed to water and stuff. It won't affect the performance of it at all, but it will affect the, the look and the feel of it, so try not to get it too wet. Then, all of this would be thwarted without the chimney setup, which channels all of the smoke up out of the tent. If you're getting smoke in your tent, you're slowly dying, right? So it's, that was a huge worry that I had. It's like, off-gassing of the actual tent, like, what, what is this stuff made of? What are the vinyl windows like? And then any smoke in there. One time on the previous stove, the door wasn't completely sealed. And when I came in, there was like the faint smell of smoke. You could see this little wisp coming up. And I just like closed it and oh, that fixed it. So it was user error. I've never had any of the, the chimney stuff leak and I've never had any of that off-gassing smell from the Overland tents. Now there's also this little guy, which is your side box for hanging your rocks on, okay? And now you can fill that thing with your rocks, which adds more thermal mass and a little bit of buffer. You can go on both sides between you and the actual heat source. That might be a little safety for you. I have never used this with rocks because when I wanted, this is like my travel rig. I don't want to uh, go carrying rocks somewhere. And you don't want to just use any old rocks with the sauna thing, right? So I tend not to do this. I put a pot with me and boil water on it. It gets a little bit of steam in there. It's nice. It's good. Then there's also a false bottom that allows for more airflow, okay? These two guys go in here like so, and then you just got more airflow. You know, a fire is only as good as the air it gets to eat, which is why we've got a two damper opener here. This thing has worked really well in all my testing of it. And I used their previous one, their first version of the stove, which was 
all like stainless steel and it worked it worked fine but this feels a lot more coherent like more durable and rugged and surprisingly it's lighter than that one lightest one out there apparently everything fits inside and nestles in really well when i'm traveling with this i don't take this thing around personally uh because i don't bring the rocks but 29 pounds super travelable and small for something that pumps out so much so much heat little trick i learned leave the zippers down at the bottom because they get hot up at the top oh i can't take my camera in there that is too freaking hot no smell of smoke at all that thing has been going for probably 20 minutes it is hot okay it's steamy <laughs> oh <laughs> Hi, oh my God. It's already sweating. And it's big enough to do some movement even. The bag and carrying this thing is surprising. You can do it. It's a big, awkward, long thing, but you have long shoulder straps for it. All right, let's talk about where this could actually be taken to. The beach, the lake, or the river, the top of the mountain, the backyard, the party at a friend's house. You can really take this places. This kind of sauna can actually be installed at your house semi-permanent for about a thousand dollars, right? That's a reality. The travelable sauna and the really quite affordable, legit heat sauna so let me talk about traveling with it first and then talk about the at home use of it you can walk with this thing up to i'd say a handful of miles if you have a buddy that you can trade off with right this and then the larger tent thing okay you need to be aware of the fire restrictions where you're going you know every time i use this in california i was like uh i was scared i'm a california boy i don't want any california to fucking burn because of me <laughs> ever and California's wild about that, right? You wanna know about those kinds of restrictions? I wasn't thinking much about that before I was like mm, setting it up somewhere going like, wait a minute, could I go to jail for this? I, like I said, don't travel with rocks, so I like to bring a pan for a little bit of humidity in there, depending on how dry the area is that you're saunaing in. And then set up, I would say, takes about 10 minutes for the tent and the stove, and then it's, a, it's just a matter of how good you are at making a fire. These things are so efficient. It's ridiculous. Now, for a more permanent insulation, you're like, I want a sauna. I don't want to spend five to seven K. I want to spend one K on it, uh, right? The, can this be useful for that? Like, can you actually do that? You absolutely can. And I would totally recommend, or just give you two insights, okay? One of them is you're gonna need a lot of wood. If you've got a lot of wood packed and like stacked up, you, there's nothing stopping you from going out, throwing some wood in there, heading in the other room, changing, coming back out, and you're ready to go. It's amazing. You're just going to need to have wood. The quality of your wood really matters, right? The harder, drier the wood, the hotter the fire is going to get. Basically, the quality of the wood you have will determine your upper threshold of heat, okay? The oak in California I was burning gets me quite a bit hotter than this wet juniper that I have here in Texas. That's just what I had on hand. If I were going more permanent with this, I would create a simple roof on posts kind of cover for this. Why? For the rain, moisture, stuff like that, but mostly for the sun. I think that UV over time on these tents will not be very kind. I know of people who cover their tent with a tarp when they're not using it, which I don't want to look at that personally. And I also know of people who break down their tent when they use, like, you know, when they use it. I, I'm not going to, I, the whole point of this is I get to go out, make a quick fire, and I'm good to go. If I just spend another 150, 200 bucks, I don't know how, I don't know how much it, it would cost to do a simple thing that ends up looking decent, right, over this. That's what I would recommend. Get your fucking YouTube on and figure out how to make an awning. Speaking of which, I am someone who has a barrel sauna. I'll put a review to my to my thing. I still don't know which side it's on. I have been doing this for like seven years. My barrel sauna, if you were to buy it today, would be around $7,000. It's an oversized one. It's a really great, highly recommend it. But that's a huge leap from what this offers. Comparing those two, I was so enamored with the heat coming off of a wood fire stove. I couldn't believe it. 
As I mentioned earlier in the video, the heat radiates in all directions in a very different way than my electric stove where heat's coming out the top and you've got a lot of rocks around that absorbing, creating more thermal mass, right? I was stunned how good the heat was in these in a tent. You know, sometimes even when it's cold outside, I've used it. And it's just going based on the quality of your wood. I'm sweating bullets. My pores are open. I got them heat shock proteins that Andrew Huberman tells me about. I'm one of them Huberman wives, man. I can't travel with my barrel sauna, obviously. I'd be surprised if, if I ever sell this house, if I'd even break that down and take it with me. The person buying it will want it there because it looks so good. The idea of being able to throw this in my like hatchback, you know, along with a bunch of other stuff for camping is really interesting. For a, for a little over a thousand bucks, something like that. I don't know where it's coming in at. I think this stove itself is like 700 and then the, the, the tent's like 600 or something. Anyways, and you know, just check it out. It's worth a, it's worth a try, I guess. You gotta treat it kind of well. I think that fabric on the, on, the, on the tent will break down over time if you're exposing it to lots of UV. That's why I recommend building that shelter. You don't want this to get too rusty, but if it does, like, whatever, it's still gonna be hot as balls, and you can sand it down a little bit. It's made really, really solid. Compared to the first version, this is way better. To my knowledge, this is the most affordable way to get a sauna effectively delivered to your house. Like, you just have everything you need, except for the wood, and now you've got a sauna, okay? That's, fu that's fucking interesting, man. I've got links below that support the channel at no cost to you. I'll see if I can get a discount. I don't think, I don't know if I'll be able to get a discount for you, but if I do, it'll be applied during the click of that link. No cost to you. Just let them know that you found out about it here. They sent this over, but uh, they haven't told me what to say to you. This is my experience. You know, if I was making a marketing video, I wouldn't tell you about, you know, the rust or the, like, think about the fire laws where <laughs> you are, because I really wasn't thinking about that. You know, those are, those are just things to have in your pipe when you're, when you're smoking. Links below. Okay, what'd we learn? It works. There's a lot of space. The heat's incredible. You can take it lots of places. You can probably fit it in even a small car. You can also pack it up when you don't need it, and so it can just go away somewhere. But you can absolutely set this up at your house, get enough firewood delivered, and have a sauna for a thousand bucks. And not just any sauna. The heat is exceptional. Exceptional. Overland sauna. Awoo! All right. Woo, good job. All right, overland. Good job, sauna. All right, my back's hurting.